Hey ladies, it's Jen Mac, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you 100% magnetic. Magnetic, that you are bringing in the things you want to experience in your life. If you are not magnetic, then it is my intention that in today's episode I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. So have you ever noticed that when you're in a really crappy mood that crappy things happen. (laughs) You stub your toe in the morning, you run out of toothpaste, you're you run out of coffee more than toothpaste, then you're driving to work, it's pouring down rain, you catch every single red light, you get a flat tire, you don't get your parking spot at work, your boss is in a bad mood, your co-workers are gossiping about you and you walk in on it and then you hear the deadly silence. That's just an example. (laughs) No, that has not ever happened to me. So, but One thing I want to emphasize today as we're talking about becoming magnetic is the the need for introspection is really, you know, I have over 200 podcasts now and I'm constantly talking about going inward. And I will tell you this, it's a little bit of, it's one of my favorite things to do because there are a lot of answers in there. It's one of my favorite things to do, but I will say this, it is not always my number one to grab. It is so ridiculous. I teach this stuff. I coach on it. I'm a really powerful coach. And I I speak about it from stage. And it's really interesting that it's not always my go-to because God darn it, I'm human too. And it really frustrates me that I still am. Like I just, I was, I had a really bad night's sleep last night and uh, we had gone to bed at like, I don't know, 9.30, which isn't normal for us, but we went to bed at about 9.30 and um, Amy saw in logs by 10.15 And I literally, you guys, tossed and turned and tossed and turned and in and out of just like sort of dozing, but then I would wake up literally like three minutes later until about 2.30 in the morning, 2.30. And then of course the dogs get up at 5.30 and then Amy and and the boys all, you know, get up for school between 5.45 and 6.30 and then everybody's out the door by seven o'clock. So it was kind of a rough night, but I spent a lot of time lying in the dark thinking about and going inward about who am I and who do I want to become? If you haven't listened to it yet, I highly encourage you and I invite you to consider stopping this podcast and going back to the podcast. I will give you the number. I will give you the, um, the number here, but it was a few podcasts back that is be plus do plus have Let me tell you which one it is right here. It is season five, episode number 36. Season five, episode number 36. And it is a lot about how we, how we should be thinking. And I invite you to start thinking this way. Now, in order to become magnetic, this is how we have to do it. And I don't know about you, but I've been banging it around out in the world for 50 years. I just turned 50, like, last Saturday. Was it last Saturday? No, it was a Saturday. Anyway, it was on the 10th of September. And, but I want you to understand there's a couple of things at play here. So first, we have to think about what do we want? What do we want to be attracting into our life? And what's at the basis of that? Like someone says, I want more travel. And I say, okay, what's at the basis of travel? So is it more freedom or fun or adventure? Okay. And any one of those things, you want to attract love, you want to attract, you know, a husband, a wife, you want to attract a business, you want to have, and then figure out what the basis of that is. Then once you figure out what's at the basis, what's the emotion, if you've been listening to my podcast, I am constantly talking about how our thoughts move and create our emotions. Our thoughts create our emotions. The thinking is the word, are the words of the mind. And our emotions are the words of the body. In the last couple of podcasts, I talk about how we get the body to agree with our thoughts. But becoming magnetic, is it's going to be right along the same lines as that. So as we go inward and we're trying to figure out exactly what we want, what do we want to experience? What do we want to bring into our life? And then what is at the basis of that? Then once you figure that out, you now can start shifting and changing the way you talk, the way you think, to start creating that emotion of already having the thing. You know, everybody in school, 
was always telling me that, you know, I had a pretty wild imagination and I should get my head out of the clouds and more into academics. And, and I did resist that as, as any kid would. And I lived in this imagina uh, it's imaginary state most of the time. I, I had imaginary friends. I had an imaginary lifestyle. I had an imaginary everything. And, and I can still go there very easily now. Like those teachers did not squash that out of me like they attempted. And I can still go there. And I find it to be helpful in a time where I'm wanting to create new things. So here's an example of my business. You know, Amy, Amy does a lot of the behind the scenes, the technology, the, the behind the behind the scenes, like managing the money, managing the accounts, um, the technology. But I manage the, the next step would be the infrastructure right, of our business, like when I use Teachable for our courses and our Facebook groups and, of course, my podcasts and stuff like that. And then go a step further, I manage the upfront thing. So I'm the one who's making the posts and the lives and, and the videos and uh, the big vision of the business. But what I would love to get to in my business is that I have a team of people. And so in my imagination, I have these team meetings. Now, this might seem a little bit weird to you, and it might be, you know, if, I, if it didn't work so great for me, I would say that I'd be embarrassed to share this with you, but I'm not because, it's, because it works and I want you to tap into this a little bit. But I have team meetings. I go and get a cup of coffee and I talk to my team. It helps me to, to vis, uh, like visualize my business. So I have these two guys that are my tech support there and they're the ones that do all the behind the scenes. They record or they take my podcast and break it down and, and they do you know all of these other things, all this technology stuff. Then I have these two girls that are all of my marketing. They do all the branding, the colors, the font, the logos, and then they go out there and blast and, and do all the marketing and promos for all of the events. Then for all my live events, I have this one lady who helps me with all my live events, my women's retreats, my live events that were, you know, we host like weekend days, you know, where we're like all day Saturday, all day Sunday. She does all of those. And she helps, she makes the phone calls and, and organizes and, and stuff like that. Well, that's my team. And in my imagination, when I have my quote team meetings in my imagination, it immediately creates this excitement, this empowerment, and this team atmosphere. So I can go in that vision anytime I want to create that. And it's amazing and it feels amazing. What that does for me in my body as I am bringing my thoughts and my emotions together cohesively, what I'm doing is becoming magnetic. Meaning that now as, I, as long as I am holding this space, holding this emotion in my body, I am magnetizing or drawing in or attracting that actual team. Does that make sense? So let's do the same activity. Let's do the same exercise. I want you to think of the thing that you want. I want you to think of the thing that you want to experience. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be the body, the, the other, other forms of health. You want to heal you know, pain or something like that. You want to uh, attract a person into your life that you can spend some time with. You, it doesn't matter, whatever, money, business, health, relationships, your, a new career, okay? Now I want you to think about that item. Think about that thing, that experience. And then ask yourself, why do I want this thing? What is the emotional foundation of it? What am I hoping to gain from it? Or how am I hoping to feel if I get this thing? More love, intimacy, passion, adventure, fun, excitement, um, happiness, energy, strength, sexiness. What's, what's at the basis? What's at the basis of the thing that you want to create? Now, we're going to combine the two things together. So the thing that you want with the way that you want to feel, and we're going to merge those two things together. So as how we're merging them together, this is what you're going to do. You're going to create a scene and you're going to create a scene of having the thing. You are enjoying the thing. You have it. Poof. Here it is. Magic wand. There you go. It's in front of you. You have the body. You have the money. You have the job. You have the husband. You have the family. You have the car, the vacation, whatever it is you want. You have it. So in your mind, enjoy it. Go in there. Feel into it. Picture the scene, 
picture yourself enjoying the thing. And now do whatever you can do to not only keep the scene, but conjure the emotion. So sometimes I have to get the body involved. I have to get the body involved. Sometimes I can't go there in my mind. Sometimes I can't create the vision. This might be you. Maybe you can't visualize it all or you think you can't visualize it all. Um, and if you, if you do need some insight to visualizing and you think that you can't visualize, please go back and listen to the Art of Visualization uh, episode. It's early. I think it's in season one. Um, but go back and listen to that and I'll, and I'll walk you through some, some pretty powerful techniques and how you can improve that. But um, if you can't conjure it up, in your mind, just by sitting in your space, sitting on your couch and conjuring in your mind, you can't conjure the emotion, then I want you to get up and move your body as if you have already done the thing. Now, if you're, if you're in severe back pain right now and what you want to do is get up and get running and you can't because you're in severe pain, look up some YouTube videos. Look up some YouTube videos on your phone or on your computer and visualize, watch somebody running and visualize whatever you got to do to stimulate that thought and that vision because the end result is you want to create the emotion. Because if you listen to yesterday's podcast, our emotions are 90% of our creation and our thoughts are about 10. Now that, I don't know if that's a scientific fact, but I will tell you from experience, it totally is. So when I'm feeling amazing, I have amazing things happen to me. When I'm feeling like crap, I have crappy things happen to me. When I'm feeling anger, overwhelm, I have more things that show up in my life that create those things. So we are attracting those things, but then we're also heightened to see those things. When we start mastering our emotions, our lives don't just automatically become amazing and we never have problems again. But what happens is now I'm able to deal with those problems in a very calm, relaxing manner. Just because I meditate and, and go have this introspection and start working on my emotions doesn't mean that my kids are never going to make a mess again in the kitchen. It just means that I'm not going to rip their head off when they do, <laughs> right? It just means that now I'm going to be able to talk with them and teach them and work with them about the, the ways to clean up after themselves. Okay, so I want you to practice that. The next thing is carrying it through when you open your eyes and you go out about your day. That means that if you spend 10 minutes in this meditative state and trying to visualize and, and doing whatever you can to create the space, to create this emotion, is now when you get up and start engaging with the physical world is that you don't go back out and let things kick you out of that emotion. So for example, Remember I just said that like I have team meetings, right? In my mind, I have these conversations with my team and I'm engaging with my team and we're talking about things in our business and the next things that are going to be happening and the next event I'm going to hold and all these things. And I'm, you know, having this, you know, imaginary kind of team meeting, right? And I get this immediate strength and this empowerment and this, this excitement about having a team and having a business and, and just really helping people and really just growing and, and getting a bigger following so I could just engage with all these people that are in personal development and want this energy type growth. And it feels amazing. But if I get up and I, and I go and now go and sit at my computer and start complaining about how I don't have the client base I want and the people aren't responding to my posts like I want them to and how come my bank account isn't getting bigger and blah, 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 I just kicked myself out of that emotion. So this is something that really should start taking shape as we are moving along, that you are feeling into what you want, which means you're also starting to talk about what it is that you want. You can't now call your mother-in-law or your mother and be like, oh my God, I really wish that I, my husband wasn't such a dork or I wish my kids would listen. You know, you can't do that. Now you say, you know what? I'm feeling pretty good today. I'm hopeful that things will start looking up. I am allowing things into my life. Now, I know that this lingo is not something that you're going to be used to, but if you want things to shift and change, it's something that getting used to is going to be a, a priority. If you want healing, if you want deeper connections, if you want happiness, this is a way that you can get it. 
because you can use your mind at any moment. Stop thinking about that stuff over there that you don't want to experience. Start looking over here at the things you do want to experience and start creating that emotion. Now, if this is something that you need some assistance with, I believe if you've been listening to my podcast, you are already going to know and can probably repeat what I'm about to say, but I would love to have you join my Lady Rising group. I invite you to consider joining this Lady Rising group. And then even further, if you really want the support, you want to engage with me and some of the other sisters in the group, if this is something you're really looking forward to, to obtaining and shifting and changing, and then the support with all the lingo is going to be tremendously helpful for you, then I invite you to consider joining a sister call. A sister call is just a conversation and it's going to be around a certain topic. We talk about self-love, we talk about the chakras, we talk about our emotions and it's, it's an amazing group of women who support one another. So I just invite you to check it out. Go to our Lady Rising page on Facebook. Tell, tell me through the membership questions that you came in through the podcast and that you're interested in the sister circle and we'll get you hooked up. In the meantime, go out there, figure out what it is that you want, what's at the basis of it, Start creating the vision and doing whatever you can to create the emotion. And I'll see you on the other side. If you liked this episode and you look forward to future episodes and are really looking for a community to help support you with implementing the tools that we're talking about in this podcast, please consider joining our online sister community called Lady Rising on Facebook, where we focus on that spiritual support and connection, just like in today's episode. I hope you'll join us. Go to Facebook, type in Lady Rising, and tell me you came in through the podcast.